Welcome back to Trainers Lab. I'm Blake and I'm here with Ms. and we are here um, to dissect the elements of accelerated remote coaching uh, careers for anyone who wants to go online. So basically we want to create content that helps people get out there and get their remote business going um, and specifically people who are just starting out. So today what we're going to talk about and I'd love to feed you on this one, feed this question to you here, Ms. is the idea of we coach fitness, right? We coach fitness maybe in lots of different ways, whether it be strength training or uh, maybe you coach someone who is for sport or any of the other, or just for, I want to look good, move well kind of idea. Um, it can burn you out. We both experienced mm -hmm. that. We were talking a little bit off air about that. So what have you found over the years of coaching have been some ways that have kind of kept your passion for fitness alive and maybe what are some different seasons you could kind of share with us of when you've tried some new things and give some tips to some of our listeners? You know, what's really funny about this question um, because I just got a message, like an email and my uh, barber hit me up who I do some work for. This guy's been my barber since I was like 16, 17, something like that. And uh, he reminds like the barbering world reminds me of coaching and personal training a lot because you when you actually talk to barbers i've asked them like hey how, how do you get your own haircut do you cut your own hair do your associate barbers do it and a lot of them go like honestly it's the last thing i'm thinking about is my own hair because i gotta fill my chairs i gotta book my sessions like they're dealing with the same dilemma that coaches are, which is like, I'm serving my clients so hard for the thing that I love that I can't even have time to cut my own hair. It's so hard to book in that one hour, even with an associate barber, like, hey, I'll cut your hair. Because if you're a busy shop, limited chairs, like that's something you got to think about. You you can't, you you think twice, like, should I, w and as a coach, this is uh, logistically what it comes down to when you're remote coaching or a trainer, you're like, should I say yes to booking this one session or do I work out in that hour, right? Or do I say yes to these couple of clients where I have to, in that extra hour of programming that day? Or again, do I spend time uh, on my meal prep, you know, on that Sunday? So it takes away in those different ways that I think wear down on me uh, over time as a coach. And um, I will say the expectation, the culture that you're around, uh, if you go to a gym or something where like the culture is, you got to be there, you got to do the classes or else you're not a part of the crew, like that old school vibe, uh, that's going to wear down on you as a coach as well. It's going to dictate like what you want to do and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what have I found that helps to keep it fresh and allows me to feel like, oh, wow, like I feel like I can justify taking care of my own fitness without it taking away from my clients in a way. Two things I was telling you off air that has been, have been super big in this year, 2023, is golf and tennis. So as soon as the weather cleared up, I connected with one of my high school buddies for tennis um, and we started playing and that's been a game changer. Like showed me exactly how out of shape I am, worked every range of motion you don't do in the gym because I had been in the gym for a while before that anyways. Um, but like, you know, that reignited completely my feeling for being in the gym like going to the gym feels totally different even the idea of it now i'm like man when can i get to the gym right because i want to work on my core and my rotation and my cardio because it just limited me so hard right so same thing with golf i have loved every uh, and not just full games i will say that i love this is where you i feel like you have to customize it for yourself because mm -hmm. it's not just like golf yes you play a couple times a month maybe but it's hard to play games every it's like four hours to play a whole game five hours you know and so and you got to depend on four to eight people to coordinate with which i don't like so i love the driving range because i can hit 100 balls and i can f like really work my rotation my hips and every week part of my like as kobe used to say like he used to spend six months just working on his jump shot and then just working on his dribble. And every six months, he would change up the skill, the one skill he was focused on. And here's the other thing. You you must, you must find something, I feel, uh, that is not like 
dependent on you showing it off or using it on your own social media or ties into just a business thing. It has to be like purely fun. And I think as a coach, you have to get to that because think about it. You've made fun work. What was originally fun became work. So you have to figure out how to find something fun again. That's hopefully. So true. What do you think about that? That's so true. Well said. Yeah, you're the thing that you were in love with that was just fun now all of a sudden became work and that really um can take away from the joy of it if you if you let it or it can happen it can happen kind of subtly, right? Um, yeah. I love that. I love that you're doing things outside. I can see living up in the northeast, you know, I live here in Florida, how that could be how that could be really can I, huge for someone. What are you saying? Yeah. Can I, can I, uh, this just jumped out to me and I want to make sure I, uh, uh, say this because it is a, it's showing you a byproduct the same way a lot of people can relate when they first got into the gym or found an activity they liked. It's like all of a sudden I'm drinking enough water. All of a sudden I'm getting enough sleep. All of a sudden I'm conscious of these other things without even trying, like without even trying because you care about this other thing so much and you want to uh, perform, right? Mm. So an example I read, I think this was a New York Times study or something weird like that, but I don't really care about the validity of it. The idea just stood out to me where doing two minutes of exercise every like hour or two hours had a lot of crazy similar effects and impact to like just doing a 45 minute, 60 minute session. If you actually did two minutes of aerobic like activity in that time frame, right? And so uh, I started like just practicing the golf. I actually have it right here. Practicing my, you know, like pitching wedge and my putter just inside, just the just the swing, not even hitting it, right? So now all of a sudden I'm working on my rotation. My hips are burning lightly and I'm like, dude, back. I got to crack it. And then now I realize, oh, two minutes have passed, right? Okay. A couple hours go by, pick it up again. Now all of a sudden you start, you know, working on it mm -hmm. again. So now I got these foam balls that are coming, uh, tomorrow and they're meant to hit indoors. So you can like hit it. Nothing happens. Obviously you don't destroy anything, hopefully. And you don't hit it with full force, but enough to like yeah. simulate ball flight and, and work on that. So to me, I found out what's important. I like to have things that are in my control that I can do often. I don't want just an activity that's like once a month I do this because it's like not often enough to feel fun regularly. And I think it's got to be once a week or twice a week at least, whatever this yeah. is you choose to do. Um, and exciting enough for you that it makes you kind of work on it like – a lot of people who are into maybe let's say um, CrossFit or whatever this sport is, like the, you'll, they'll naturally be foam rolling their hips while watching TV because it's just like a habit you fall fall into. You know what right. I mean? So what are things that uh, the byproduct of it is great? You're like, oh, practicing my swing and opening up my shoulders is not a bad idea. Right. Uh, off the course. Yeah, I feel like one of the things you're describing is. Um, you know, like seasons, like it sounds like you're in a season right now where like the technicality of, of the sport of golf or the, the ability to kind of get better at tennis is really important to you. So what you're going to be able to do is just kind of continue to think through how do I get a little bit better on the swing? How do I get a little more technical? Um, I think, I think it depends on the person. Like there's been seasons where for me, I just, I needed to work out because I needed to feel the the pump or the enjoyment of lifting weight the sweat the sweat and so there's been like what i've done over the years um in a more simple way is like i've rotated seasonally kind of strength training but types of st strength training so like i remember i did like two months of just strongman one time just because i was bored of like crossfit or bodybuilding and so I'm yeah doing like atlas stones and i'm doing axle bar carries and I'm doing heavy, heavy farmer carries and sleds and like just things like I don't spend a lot of time doing and like made it the bulk of my fitness. And, and I have found like, if I rotate through that, especially if I don't have a, like a clear goal, like I'm not training for anything in particular, it makes just the fun of learning something and the challenge of trying to get better. Like for me, when I got started in CrossFit, like the best, best part about CrossFit and what makes CrossFit fun for most people is the challenge of like, can I express and do that? So like the, 
Yeah. A lot of times the first one is, can I even do a snatch or can I do a muscle up or can I do the butterfly pull up? Right. I know a lot of people make fun of that outside of, uh, you know, CrossFit, but like there's a technique to it and like making it look pretty and fluid. And, and so like getting good at those things or handstands or, you know, things like that, like that was kind of the fun. And then all of a sudden the byproduct was you got fitter. Um, yes, you know, it distracted you enough, it distracted right? You. It distracted you enough so that you could have fun. Yeah. You were just having fun trying to get better at something, which is like a video game or, um, any other kind of like, uh, sport that people have always enjoyed doing. So from there, like the, the goal really is like, just how do you make it like, uh, fun because where it doesn't become fun. And I heard you say this earlier was like, when it feels like this is still for work, like it becomes my identity or something. Right. So yes, you're like, Oh, I got to film this for social media right. as my like influencer post for today. It's like, Oh, you're not going to get the same thing out of totally. it in my experience. Like I, I'm, I actually just did that today. Like I was having a lot of fun quietly working on, um, my cleans today and doing some Ollie lifts in your program for me. But like, for me, it was like one of those, like the last set felt really good. I'm going to film it and put it on social media just because I have, um, I'm enjoying myself and I want to, I want to show people I'm enjoying myself. So it's not necessarily 100%. always a bad thing, but there's like, there is that, I love that you said that because there is that safeguard of like, I'm going to keep this a little bit more sacred for myself. Like this is not work time. This is play time. Um, and 100%. it's healthy and important for the coach, I think. So. I do think you're right. Like you can film it. I, I do too. I just think about it. I'm like, oh, actually I did pull out my phone, but it's the idea, you know, where you've been at, where you filmed the whole session, mm -hmm. you're just doing it for the camera. You're like, okay, this became a content creation session rather than my hobby time that I carved out or whatever. So it's just protecting that time for play for fun that's actually physical because i think it really will bring you back to your roots whatever weird experiences you had as a real like beginning coach that brought you to it hopefully allows you to reconnect with that you know in some way i i also think like things that allow me to feel like completely distracted from work or like i'm totally focused here and i can't have my mind go somewhere else those are the best ones so like for me cycling on the weekends has been great like, and I don't go with anybody yeah. Not because I don't want to, but because I just want to, I don't want it to necessarily be super intense. I want maybe aspects of it to be a little bit intense, but mostly I want to feel like I'm outside and I, I'm free to go anywhere I want. And I want to just be focused with the, the lane in front of me and what's in front of me right there. Um, and those are like great 30, 45 minute kind of just cyclical work that I really enjoy. Um, and it's, it's like not hard, right? It's like grab and go. I put my shorts on, grab my bike and I just, I'm riding. That's a big lesson I think to take from this is try to find activities that are approachable for where you are at. Because if you pick things like even golf to some extent, if I said, I'm going to play three golf games a week, that's just time wise. I can't do it money wise. It's a lot of money to play that frequency and you know, that might not be approachable for everybody, but it's like driving range for me. I could do that several times a week. I could go every day if I want yeah. and I have control. I don't have to coordinate with somebody else to be like, Hey, come play with me. Right. So find things like running. This is why I think a lot of people love running low key and I'm getting back into it is because one, of course it improves your cardio and all that stuff. But two, you just need running shoes, some shorts. Yeah. If you like music, maybe headphones and you go. That's it. That's it. You know, so you're not dependent on a lot yeah. to do that activity. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to meet somebody. You don't have, you know, there's, you don't have to have a certain amount of equipment and it's free. It's cheap. Yeah. So, well, let's wrap it up real quick. It's a short one today. Um, yeah. What would you say are kind of like your three main tips? Like we've kind of given some good stories and good personal things, but what, how would you kind of summarize three main things we give people here? Number one, find an activity that um, gives you pure joy and fun. And when you ask yourself, like, what's the point of doing this? You shouldn't be able to come up with too much of a reason. It should be like, I don't know, it's just fun, right? Two, there should be some byproducts, hopefully, that this gets you excited enough about that other things start happening. You start drinking more water. Like, those are the things you'll notice, the simple things. You're like, man, I'm going to play tomorrow. I should probably get to bed early or whatever it helps you 
want to do that was a lot harder to do before. There was a lot more friction before. And now after this thing, you're like wanting to do it, even if it's just getting to the gym to go work on something. Then I would say number three is um, frequency maybe. I think this needs to be somewhat frequent where like it can't be just like one golf game once a month because that's too it's too long to look forward to it's got to be what do you break down that skill into maybe it's the range that you can do twice a week at least because twice a week is about 30 ish percent of your week or something like that right and if you can do that I find it's you can do other stuff. There's room for things to come up, but you can still probably make two days a week happen. So um, those are my three things I'd say. That's great. Um, so in conclusion, what we're going to do is just invite people. If you're interested in trainers lab dot um, like in what we're offering for trying to get people uh, basically into the remote coaching business, um, you can head on over to trainers lab pod.com and hit up Ms. and I on D DM us if you're interested in anything. Uh, we have a lot of good resources over there, some of our blogs. We can connect you to our other podcasts that we go over lots of other different topics. But we really want to do anything we can to support you. So hit us up over there. Check out our 30-day um, our guarantee gets you your first client. And uh, we have other things on there that you can chop around and look at. But head on over there. And if there's anything else you want to drop there, Ms., yeah, it is different. Like the blogs that we write and stuff are actually very intimate and personal that Blake and I get to be alone and sit through and mold yeah. and we do care about it is different from what we maybe talk about on the pod. So um, I think you'll get to binge a lot of good stuff there. And then our consultation guide. So we have like a 100 yes. consultation questions um, that if you are just getting started into this all the way from them, be, you know, talking to somebody before they're your client, all the way to them being after a year later, how do you maintain that. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. So check it out, trainerslabpod.com. Thanks for hanging out today. We really appreciate you investing your time in this. Um, and we will talk to you next time. Yeah. See you guys.